G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. A lot of us are familiar with saline soils and salty soils here in Australia, but if you put a fence up and it's rusted within a couple of weeks, you might have the nastiest soil of all. Today we're really lucky, I'm talking to Rob Fitzpatrick from Soil Science Australia, and he's going to talk to us about the daddy of all problem soils, acid sulphate soils, how to recognise them and what to do. Don't forget guys, if you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and there's plenty more on timthompson.ag. Let's talk to Rob. <laughs> G'day Rob, how are you mate? Hi Tim, good to meet you. Oh, it's fantastic to see you too. Thank you for giving up your time today. You're a busy man. Acid sulphate soils, they're the daddy of all. They are the nastiest, the nastiest soils in the world. That's what they are known for. And if we're talking about nastiest soils in the world, then this is the nastiest of the nastiest soils right where we're standing. Yes. Tell me about this. The pH here has a pH of 0.5, which is even more acidic than battery acid. And you actually did some research pits here and you buried some steel in here. Can you tell me a little bit about we that? We did, yeah. I had a PhD student bury little pieces of um, fencing yep. here, different types of fencing. Yep. that are different coatings and so on and these corroded within weeks. So you put steel fencing supplies in here, wire and posts and various other things. That's right. And within weeks it was gone. Gone, absolutely. Not months, yep. weeks. weeks. Now the reason why we came here was that this fence that you can see in the background yes. was corroded but on either end non-corroded. Yes. So, so in other words there was something going on here and that's what drew our attention to it. So we realized there was a problem here. We had a look at the soil. The soil had a low pH of 0.5 in this case. Yes. And so we looked at the corrosion, analyzed the corrosion products and we analyzed the soil. Now acid sulfate soil comes from soil that's really waterlogged. It's got a lot of salt. So it, it occurs a lot around estuarine areas and, and mangrove swamps and places like that. That's right. And, it, and all the high carbon amounts slowly pack down over time, is that correct? Yeah, so what you need to form one of these acid sulphate soils is you need water, yep. organic matter, lots of heat, and of course with all that information and bacteria, they make pyrite. So it's a little factory for making of pyrite. Mm -hmm. Now pyrite is iron fooled gold, or iron right. pyrite. Yes. And if it's in the ground and it's anaerobic or wet, in a wet condition, it can yep. stay like that for millions of years, in fact, for all time. And it's not a problem? Not a problem. So if you see pyrite in your local creek, don't panic? No, no problem. It's this black thing, it's sitting under the water, it's not a problem. In fact, you could catch fish, fish from about, above it, it's not a problem. So what turns that pyrite into this? Such a huge problem that's now we're going to be here for decades, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what happens is as soon as you take that pyrite and expose it to air or yes. oxygen, the pyrite reacts with water and oxygen and it makes sulfuric acid. So it's a little factory. Right. Make sulfuric acid, and you know what sulfuric acid does. It's not too good for marine life, no, is it? No, no way. Now there's enormous problems up on the Tweed Coast um, with oyster farms, deaths of oysters, yep. deaths of fish, all sorts of things. And some of that's attributed to acid sulphate soil mismanagement, isn't it? That's right. So it might just be a little problem here in this one area. As soon as water gets into it, of course, it's sulfuric acid and that can go everywhere. So it gets into the estuaries, it gets into water supplies. And the worst thing is that it dissolves the clay in the soil and releases aluminium, which is toxic. Yep. So that kills the fish and creates havoc in the environment. Now it's quite common around estuarine areas and low-lying coastal areas, but you can find it elsewhere, can't you? You can find it where there used to be oceans millions of years ago as well. That's right, in, in sort of buried sediment, so to speak, and that occurs all through the Murray-Darling Basin and throughout Australia. You've got these buried sediments, and if you disturb them, yep. they're going to turn into acid. So if I put up a fence, and within a couple of weeks it's gone rusty, that's a huge warning sign, isn't it? Absolutely. If I suspect that there's an area on my farm that's got an acid sulphate soil and I want to manage that, what's the best tip? You can either go around it 
Just if so it's number a, one, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Put your fence around it. Put your, go, go around it. So if it's a tiny little patch of saline area, or wet area, don't put your fence through it. Go around it. That's, right. that, that's the easiest way, you know, to, yep. to avoid it. If you have to go through it, if you really, really have to go through it, then there are things you can do. And obviously, you're going to have to be aware that you need yep. to replace it every few years if you use the standard galvanised wire I've used. Yes, yes. So if you use the standard galvanised wire, it's going to corrode and it's going to be, have to be replaced every second or third year. Right. The other alternative is, of course, to use stainless steel. Yes, which but is expensive. But that's going to cost money. It's, it's going, going to cost, cost money. money. So either way, but, you're going to lose money. But there is a cheaper option. You can use plastic. What about the posts that they're now making that have plastic coating around the base of the post where it goes in the ground? Is that a recommendation? Absolutely. And that's what they're doing when they do the dog fence. All right. So the hot tip is, if you suspect acid sulfate soils, don't disturb them. Get onto an expert. You can get onto an expert through the Registered Soil Practitioner Program at Soil Science Australia. I'll put a link to the yes. website in the description. That's number one. Don't do anything until you've spoken to someone and got some good advice that's trained. And number two, if you can go around it, go around it. Number three, if you can't go around it, use plastic coated fencing materials. You, what you can also do is look at the National Atlas of Acid Sulfate Soils and it will yep. tell you in advance whether you've got acid sulfate soils in that region. It's not always that accurate, but it's worth having a look at. And that's a freely available on Soil Science Australia website that you can get a link to it. Fantastic. Well, Rob, that will hopefully save people from repeating problems or even worse, disturbing their soil and creating an issue like this. Because if you have acid sulfate soils and you disturb them, you've got decades of drama, haven't you? Absolutely. And of course, it's not just that area that's disturbed, it, it leaches. It leaches and it goes into a stream, water stream, all that sort of stuff. Well, water we don't supplies, want that, do yeah, we don't want that down. And we've got drinking water and it can also get down into the groundwater, which is even a bigger problem, like on Norfolk Island, for example. And there's problems not only with the low pH, but what acid sulfate soils do is they release all of the toxic heavy metals out of the soil that are naturally there. That's right. And that becomes a soup. Of toxins doesn't yeah, it? Particularly aluminium. Aluminium is the really big one because all the clay minerals in soil, soils have got a lot of aluminium in and the first thing that the sulfuric acid does is it, attacks, releases, the it releases the aluminium and that's the really bad one. Of course there's, there's you know, many other toxic elements that occur there like zinc and nickel and arsenic and that sort of thing but the big one is aluminium. Well, Rob, thank you very much for your time, mate. Thanks, I really appreciate it. Yeah, And good. Um, it's really important, I think, for people, before they disturb boggy areas or wet areas or marshes, to carefully consider what they might be releasing into the environment. Absolutely, yes. Get on to Soil Science Australia. They're here to help. If you like this sort of video, don't forget, guys, hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. There's plenty more on timthompson.ag, and there's a link to Soil Science Australia in the description. You can follow that link if you suspect that you are suffering from acid sulfate soils. Good on you, Rob. Thanks.